Welcome to this rapid revision session on planes farming and new technology, or more specifically how new technology solved some of the problems and challenges of planes farming. Let's start by reminding ourselves of what problems farmers on the plains actually suffered. Firstly, there was a lack of trees, which meant there was little to burn or build with. Also, the hot summers and low rainfall led to drought and crop failure. Also, extreme weather and wildlife could destroy crops too. Wildlife like the buffalo would move through crops and completely trash them. Deep grass roots broke ploughs. And cold winters made survival a struggle with little firewood. Some of these problems were solved in less innovative ways. For example, using those tree roots to your advantage to produce sod houses, which were reasonably well insulated at least. Another might be to find other sources of fuel, for example, buffalo chips, in other words, cow pads. But when it comes to new technology, several new things were developed that really helped. We're going to take them one by one now, and we'll see what the main developments were. Solution number one, wind pumps. First invented by David Halliday in 1854, the self-governing windmill was able to pump water from underground by itself. It pointed into the wind, and that's what it means by self-governing. The vane on the back ensures that it's always pointed into the wind and therefore always working at maximum efficiency. The water that it drew up could be used for drinking, and, uh, drinking, watering plants and for the animals. It could also be used for irrigation for fields in the drier areas and during drought conditions. There were several advantages to this. The wind pump could pump water out of wells up to 30 feet deep. After 1870, steel blades, like the one shown in the picture here, made them more effective at withstanding the howling wind plains winds. By 1880, better, more powerful pumps, which needed oiling only once a year, were developed. However, there were some drawbacks. Many wells needed deeper than 30 foot um, uh, pumps. 300 feet was not uncommon on the drier areas of the plains. Also, early pumps needed constant oiling and maintenance, otherwise they seized up. However, this is a start, and it solved many of the problems of providing sufficient water on plains farms. Solution number two, barbed wire. This is such a common invention now that it makes you think it surely must have always existed, and yet it didn't, not until 1874. We can see in the diagram there two early forms of barbed wire. Wood was scarce on the plains, so it was difficult to build large fences. Barbed wire was invented by Joseph Glidden in 1874 and allowed homesteaders to fence off their land from animals. You can see the process in the photograph below. A bare minimum of wooden poles driven into the ground, threaded between with lengths of barbed wire which was really easily available. Barbed wire was also used by ranchers to keep their livestock in. Barbed wire was far cheaper, easier and quicker to build than wooden fencing. It was highly effective in keeping animals, domesticated and wild, off of homesteads where they might damage crops. However, it took time for it to be widely used. Only from the 1880s was it common, when it was one-tenth of the original cost of the wire from 1874. Early wire rusted too, and this was only solved later with protective coverings. Solution 3. Ploughs. Prairie grass roots grew deep and thick and often broke traditional iron ploughs. Early sodbuster steel ploughs worked better, but they were slow and expensive in the 1830s when they were first used. The sulky plough, invented in 1875, and there's one pictured here, was effective in ploughing through tough weeds and prairie grass. The advantages were that the sulky plough was strong, easy to operate, and it didn't require the ploughman to push it along behind. It was what we know as a ride-on plough, and we can see the seat in the picture there. It was strong enough to plough through the prairie grass and weeds. In the first six years of production, 50,000 sulky ploughs were sold. But there were some drawbacks. Six times as many walking ploughs were sold during this same time. People were more used to how they worked, and they were a lot cheaper. Early sulky ploughs were unstable on bumpy ground and could dangerously tip over if people weren't careful too. But overall, the sulky plough solved some of the remaining problems of ploughing and cultivating the plains. Some final points then. New technology was useful in solving the problems of the plains farming. A lack of water was helped by the invention of wind pumps. A lack of wood was helped by the use of barbed wire. And the tough grass roots were overcome by the sulky plough. It is worth remembering the, how these things got out to the plains too. The railroads. So don't discount the railroads as a form of new technology helping. That's the end of this rapid revision session. I hope it was useful. And if it was, then please like the video and subscribe to the channel. 
You can always leave a suggestion for another topic you'd like me to cover in a video in the comments below. But for now, thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.